Hi, uh, this is going to be a video just going through the end of module organic test. If you haven't sat the test, there's a copy of it below in the information section. So I'm just going to go for the answers. And for the first four, in order to get one mark, you had to get it all correct. So any little mistake meant you didn't get the mark on this. So the first one is butan. Two what? Now I'd have accepted two butanol on that, but apart from that, that's the only answer that will get you the mark there. B is propanol. You would have been allowed propan one L, although it's the one's not really required. C is two free dichloro pentane. So again, had to be all like that in order to get the mark. Four, or D, is one, one, dibromo, ethan, two ol. Would have got you the mark, although strictly speaking, it's two, two, dibromo, ethan, one ol. Either of those would have got you the one mark there. Uh, we don't at A-level have to go into orders of priority and why the alcohol gets the priority over the bromine. E. So two marks available for E. First of all, one mark if you said that it's hept freeing. The third bond along from right to left is the double bond. And that this is E, heparine. Got you the second mark. So two marks there. And F is Z, but, tuing. So one mark for but, tuing. One mark for saying it was Z, but, tuing. And that was question one. Question two was worth seven marks. And there were two marks for the initiation step. So in the initiation, if you said that it went Cl2 goes to Cl free radical, or another Cl free radical, you got one mark. If you said that it was UV light that does this, that causes this uh, fission, then you got a second mark. Then in the propagation step, one mark if you said Cl dot plus C6H14 goes to C6H13, free radical, plus HCl, one mark, and then one mark for C6H13 plus Cl2, going to C6H13 Cl plus a chlorine free radical. So that's propagation, one mark for each of those. So up to four marks so far, so three marks in the termination step. First one, chlorine free radical, chlorine free radical to a chlorine molecule. Next mark, the two hexyl free radicals coming together Oops. to form C12H26. One mark, and then C6H13 plus Cl to C6H13 Cl. For one mark, so seven marks there, two in the initiation, two in the prop, three in the termination. Question three, it's just to complete and balance the equations, one mark for each. First up, C3, H8, it's combustion, so it's O2, goes to CO2 plus H2O. Three carbon dioxides, four waters, so we need five oxygens. One mark, C16H34 plus O2, same product because it's complete combustion. 16, that is not 13, that is 34. 17, so this is 24 and a half. You could have said two. 49, 32, 34, and just doubled everything there. That 
both answers will get you the mark. And then C6, H14, plus O2, but incomplete combustion. So we get carbon monoxide. So six, seven, and then six and a half here for incomplete combustion. So one mark for each of those. Question four asks you to draw the product you'd expect at A, B, C, and D. If we react propane with each of these. So with Br2, we get 1, 2, bromopropane. With H2, we get propane. I'm going to draw all the hydrons in. With HBr, we get two products. The major one will be 2-bromopropane. And the minor product will be 1-bromopropane. This is A, B, C, D, or C and D swapped around. But one mark for each of these that you got. You didn't have to name them. Question five asks you to draw and name the mechanism for the reaction of butanoin and Br2. So this is electrophilic addition for one mark. Then the initial step is to have a induced dipole on the bromine molecule, one mark for the arrow coming from the bond, uh, the pi bond in the double bond to the bromine, and then one mark for the fission of this bond between the two bromines and the electrons going to the electron rich bromine. One mark then if you had this as your intermediate. Just check the marks on this. One mark for this. I think it's one mark for that just by itself. So if you've got that set up, that's two. That's three. To give you this is the product. So four marks. Ah, oh, no, because it doesn't actually ask you to name it. So it must be two marks for this bit. So one for each arrow that you get correct. One mark for this three, one mark for the final structure, and one mark for electrophilic addition for the five marks. Okay, so draw a section of the polymer formed by butanoin by showing two repeat units. Easiest way to draw the polymers that would form is to draw the double bond and then change the bond angle slightly. So you've got everything bonded straight up or straight down. So we have this. This is our butanoin. Then pi bond breaks and bonds this way with the same thing again. So you just repeat it again. Then this is going to carry on and carry on. We're just showing two of the units. It's going to carry on for a while. So we have C2H5, C2H5 on the second of each carbon. That's two repeat units. For two marks. Pent and two all can be heated with a H2SO4 catalyst. Okay, so we've got our pent and two all. 
and that can be heated and it's going to form free products. So this is all showing us where is the double bond going to go. So when you heat up pentatool with the acid catalyst, it dehydrates, we lose water. So there's three hydrants here, two here. Now either one of the hydrants from here and the OH is going to go and form water, or the OH and one of the hydrogens from this carbon are going to leave and draw water. And then what's left is then a double bond between either this carbon or this carbon. So the first one is pent one -ing. And that got you two marks. That's where the double bond, this time this hydrogen's gone, this OH is gone. So to replace it, a double bond has formed. Next one is if it goes to here. Now this is pent-2-ene, but we can get stereoisomers here. So this version I've drawn here, hydrogens are on opposite sides. This is E, or trans pent -2 -ene. And the third version is if a different hydrogen swapped, which creates Z pent-2-ene. So it depends which one of these hydrogens leaves and how it forms this uh, double bond. Then we get stereoisomerism forming because of the, the fact this doesn't rotate anymore. So this is A, B and C. Uh, one mark for the structures, one mark for the names. So be careful how you've drawn these. If you've drawn the same thing twice here, you'd only get one mark you have to show the stereoisomerism in your drawing. Question eight. Okay, student reacted to bromopropane with excess OH minus. State the name of this type of reaction. So this is a nucleophilic substitution. Substitution because we're replacing the bromine on an alka a haloalkane with an alcohol group. So bromopropane, slight tiny dipole there, OH minus, comes in and attacks there, which causes the bond to break and the electrons from this bond to go to that bromine, which gives us OH plus Br minus left over. So a substitution, the bromine is substituted with the OH, and they're both nucleophiles. They can donate a lone pair of electrons to form a bond. So this was five marks again. Set in the type of structure, outline the mechanism, draw and name the product. Propan 2 ol So one mark, one mark, one mark, one mark, one mark. This must go from either the lone pair or the negative charge to this carbon. This bond, uh, sorry, this curly arrow goes from the bond into the bromine. And that's the five marks for question eight. Question nine, stay and explain a trend in the rate of hydrolysis. So as you go down the group, the reaction gets faster. So this, the rate of hydrolysis of CI will be quicker than the rate of hydrolysis of a CF bond. Uh, if you said this is because bonds are weaker, one mark, then anything that implies reaction requires less energy. Another mark left for the three marks quite generous on how I mark that. If you got the general gist I gave you, kind of the three marks. In question 10, we have got sharp peak, or several sharp peaks, at 3000 on the infrared spec. So this is CH. We know it's the only other thing that could occur at 3000 is the uh, OH peak in a carboxylic acid. We know it's not that because it's not broad. Our, peaks go up and down like that, so kind of nice and sharp. If it was an OH, it'd be rounded and broad like that. 
then peak at 1700 is C00. So one mark for identifying either of those. One mark then if you said the parent iron peak is at 72. So putting these together, you know you've got a carbonyl, CO, and that then it's got an MR of 72. So this could be, if we start with the simplest carbonyl, we'll go with methanol. This has got a MR of 30. So we can just extend it a little bit bigger to ethanol. So this has got an MR of 44. So we know it can't be either of these two because we're looking for 72. So next, if we go next biggest, is either propanol, sorry, or propano. Both have got the MR of 58. So again, can't be that. So if we go a bit bigger, we've got either butanone or butanol which does have the MR of 72, both of these. So it's either butanol or butanol. Either one would have got you the mark. Oh, sorry, two marks there for getting the final structure. Part B. So kind of two overlapping peaks at 3,000. We'll call the bigger one 3100, this is kind of a rounded one. That's OH, and it's the OH in an acid. Then we've got about 2800 sharp, sharp peaks, that's our CH, and a peak at 1700, which is C00. So one mark for each of those you manage to identify. Then M plus peak is 74. There is a slight peak at 75, that's because of the isotopes. So that would be uh, carbon isotopes that of carbon-13 that just appear every now and again, just create a tiny little peak up there. And if it's an OH and acid, it's got C below, it's a carboxylic acid. So using the same technique as before, go, well, this has the MR of 44, just check that, 32. 44, 46. Yeah. So, ethanoic acid is going to be 60. So, neither of these could work. But if I go to propanoic acid, that does have 74. So, it's propanoic acid. So one mark for each of these, so a total of three marks there, one mark for the same the M plus peak 74, and then one mark for getting the structure at the end. And it was out of 57, I believe.